Hello and welcome to another Break for Assault unboxing video. I'm Lee Parnell and I'm recording from somewhere in the south of England. And today we're taking a look at Battlefront CH-53 Sea Stallion. The CH-53 Sea Stallion is a direct only release from Battlefront to coincide with the Airborne Assault missions released as part of the Red Dawn book. The CH-53 was designed to a US requirement for a heavy lift helicopter. Sikorsky started with the Sea King as a basis, scaled up its cabin, fitted more powerful engines and a larger rotor blade, giving them a helicopter able to carry far more than the original airframe. The US Marine Corps bought the D version. This had a more space efficient cabin, a new transmission and also auto rotor blading systems to allow it to be better used on their flat top carriers. The helicopter was also adopted by West Germany Israel, Iran, pre-revolution, and also by Mexico and Austria. In airborne assault missions in Team Yankee, the US Marine Corps can swap out its Hueys and its rifle companies for sea stallions. West Germans can also do this with their Falschermager units, but also use it to carry the Weasel, tank destroyer, and light recce vehicle. This um, incurs an extra cost for those units of plus one point per helicopter acquired, and each helicopter can carry two weasels. Currently, there's no rules for the Israelis or the Iranians to use helicopters, and hopefully that will be introduced in a later oil wars book, should that fear to ever be re retouched. Obviously, it's not beyond the wit of man for current players to work out their own rules for using it with those armies. I'm trying, currently trying to convince Duncan he really needs some passage in helicopters. It's going to be quite funny. Now, the Airborne Assault Mission Pack comes with cardboard counters to represent the Sea Stallion and the other NATO and Warsaw Pack helicopter transports. However, what kind of aerospace engineer would I be if I just suffice with cardboard counters rather than just buying the model itself? And my cohort Eddie, also being the aerospace engineering ilk, agreed likewise. So, one monstrously quite expensive order later, which is going to make me wince when the credit card bill comes in, we end up with six hips. Uh, two, two Chinooks and two Sea Stallions plus a third one that's been given to Mike as a thank you for hosting us over the year. So um, yeah, I can't say Battlefront gave me this because I actually was dumb enough to pay for it myself. I'm kidding, it's, it's a good investment. That's what I'm going to keep telling myself. Um, so let's take a look at it. Okay, as with the hip, Sea Stallion comes in a direct only box so there's no fancy picture. We do get a nice thick cardboard and lots of bubble wrap. First up, the hole. Let's go crack this open again. If you remember from the hip video, but the front can't be said to not be wrapping these as well. Unroll that. And there we go. Again, as for the hip, that's being held together just really by a little bit of stickiness uh, we can take that apart and clear it up save the bubble wrap for the kits okay next up we have da, 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 i think this is a horizontal stabilizer it could be one of the drop tanks of course it's gonna get quite tedious it's a drop tank so let's just do work through there is a horizontal stabilizer don't worry there's gonna be a photo in a minute showing all these bits out as it were okay white metal bits three main undercarriage Ooh, that one's got a bit of flush on it compared to the other one and then also we got the um, rotor head and the lower assembly for the tilt for the uh, main rotor we got the other drop tank more bubble wrap um, the sponsor bits and then lastly rotors inside yep these are the cardboard rotors let's cut this open free I quite like this it keeps it nice and flat so I recommend you keep your bits in there when you're not using them and there you are and um, the rotors themselves are like a sort of the dark grey on one side Normally white and yellow, you can see where legs are cut cardboard or laser cut MDF. No, it's kind of cardboard, I guess. 
Um, you probably want to just get, run a black marker or something over the other side, I guess. Certainly around the edges just to make them blend in a bit better, I think. And yeah, put them back in. And there we have an unboxed Sea Stallion. As you can see, the part count isn't particularly large. Um, we dealt with two major hull sections plus the tail rotor assembly. A bunch of white metal bits for the undercarriage and the rotor assembly and then the optional fuel tanks and the rotors. The model captures quite a lot of fine detail especially on like the subsystems. Um, communication aerials, the infrared decoy system, chaff and flare dispensers, even the actual um, tail rotor um, folding mechanism are all captured with a decent amount of detail which is good. I particularly like the attention given to the engines and their um, particle separators at the front. Cockpit glazing is well realised, only let down by the fact that the split on the two holes goes right down the centre of the central canopy glazing. Um, would be nice maybe if they could offset to one side. Unfortunately there's no option to have the um, crew master door or the rear door open to have a door gunner. It's very much all sealed up, which I guess makes for a simpler model for construction and production. Yeah, all in all, I can't fault the detail. Um, I like the fact the actual rotor head is well captured with the um, fairly chunky top rotor and bottom rotor bits on there. Uh, yeah, all in all, quite a good level of detail and quite a compact little kit. Now let's look at building it. Okay, so let's build the Sikorsky. Now I've already cleaned up some bits. One thing to note are there's a little nib on here and on here you can just about see. But we're going to stop it from fitting correctly, so I'll cut those off. Similarly, on the tail, there's a nib at the top of these two bits. Just cut that off and just fold it down so it's a relatively straight line. Um, as always, always good idea to do a uh, test fit, dry fit, and see how it's going to go on. So we're just going to get a super glue and run it around. Much like the previous build on the hip, we want to make sure we've got a super glue that's not going to grab too quickly. We well, you know I can quite tell how this thing's going to go. Let's put a little bit extra on those little spheres that used to line it up. And then we're just going to nudge it around so we can get our power lines more or less lined up okay doesn't look too too bad Ooh, he says then moving it okay okay that all dried up just a little bit of sanding just to get rid of some of the edges now we add the tail now you can see here, ooh, not the camera, but the tail just goes slot in like that basically. So we'll add some glue to the outside and then run a little bit round the edge. And next up we're going to put the stabiliser on. This just sits on the top of the rudder. Like so. Let's get that dry up. Okay, that's the tail rotor on. So what we could do next is start putting on the undercarriage and the similar tail rotors. Okay, last Lastly, for a West Channel example, you need to put the tail rotor on. Um, effectively, the spinner goes on the top, and then we'd super glue the bottom plate on from an assembly like that. Um, making sure the spokes are sort of pointing in towards each other. Now, I'm not going to super glue it on because I want to paint these all bits separately, but. It gives you an idea there. 
Now, if you're doing the US Navy example, sorry, US Marine Corps example, you'd um, be putting on the the actual um, drop tank assemblies. They go onto the sponsons and marked right and left, so very hard to mess it up. I'm sure, someone will be on the forum soon saying they have. And yeah, good idea. So what they go on like that. Yeah, there you are. One sea stallion. Rules-wise, a sea stallion is much like other NATO helicopters, insofar as it's hit on the 4+, plus as a 5+, plus save. It has a carrying capacity of 10 infantry stands, or instead it can carry two of the weasel vehicles, either the weasel tow or the weasel recce. Now you probably notice that while the weasel tow does come in units of two or four, the weasel recce comes in units of three, which makes it somewhat awkward if you have a three vehicle platoon, because then you have... Um, one weasel being carried being no mates in the back of the actual sea stallion. Ultimately, the sea stallion represents a, the ultimate eggs in one basket scenario. Putting an entire platoon in one of them and hoping not to be hit is going to be part of the fun of the game, I presume. I can see it having a definite utility for bringing in the weasel um, without reliance on the parachutes. However, again, it's going to come down to um, the scenario of a table as to how effective a helicopter assault can truly be. Of course, playing in a massive barn where you have plenty of space to be away from those sound systems will make this somewhat more survivable than playing on a 6x4 table with half the Red Army's sound systems literally inches away from you. My final thoughts on the Sea Stallion are that for its cost, uh, a knock in considerable £21, it's kind of a miss it doesn't come with decals. Um, it would be nice to have the play with the, here and American decals in. Um, especially, it feels like you know, if you're buying what, as Mike put it, is effectively an extravagant counter, it'd be nice if the extravagance was rewarded somewhat by having all the bits you needed within the actual set. The detail is good, it's marred a little by the fit of the um, tail boom to the whole halves and the whole halves to each other. There's gonna be a bit of sanding and there's gonna be a bit of filling. Probably no worse than a 90s Atelieri kit. Um, probably, probably better than that, frankly. But it's going to require a little bit of work, and it's kind of annoying how it sort of happens down the actual um, canopy transparency. So it's going to be fairly obvious unless you do a really good fix on it. Um, you'll probably you'll see these comments repeat on the hip to a large extent because they both have the same issue. But uh, do I regret buying it? Not really. I think it's um, a cool little kit. Well, it's not little. It's a cool kit and it'll look quite cool on the tabletop with the actual um, weasels shooting out of it. I think it's going to come down to how often do you think you're going to use these. Um, I'll probably get a fair amount of use both at the barn and playing special scenarios with them. If you're looking at these as an investment for club play, the cardboard box might be the way to go. Still, everything in Wargaming is, is frivolous ultimately, so this is no worse than buying anything else. And, you know, I'd probably argue it's a lot more useful than spending £3,000 on a Ward or Titan, for example, for the 40k guys out there. So there you go, that's the unboxing video for the CH-53 Sea Stallion from Battlefront. As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you really want to show your support, then head on over to the Patreon in the link below. And for us a pound, so I can do some more of this kind of stuff with some better equipment or more frivolous purchases of helicopters. That's always a possibility. In the meantime, enjoy, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Goodbye.